Hey everybody, we're going to look really quickly at uh, delayed compensation for a moment. Uh, the reason why I'm looking at this is because I get this question and I thought that it's a really easy fix, so we might as well just take a quick look at it. What we have is a system inside Logic and it's right down here, let's go under General, with plug-in latency. We have compensation. What that means is that if one channel strip is requiring additional time for some reason, either for a reverb delay or just from overall processing, and so the computer pushes it back so it can do the math, then it's going to automatically adjust all the tracks so they stay in time with each other. That's great. This is a big step up. Uh, not every piece of software has always had this. Uh, for instance, Pro Tools was kind of really late to the game on this, but it's great. It means that things sound better overall. Now, with this, sometimes we have a bigger section, and we want to uh, record a part into a project that maybe is already really big. Let's close our mixer for a second here. This one's not too big. It's has a number of tracks, but watch when I play this. Hold me close, but don't touch me. Hold my hand, I'll turn away. So it's really low, it's spread out pretty evenly across here. Um, I've done tests with things like Alchemy where I dump 15 of them, and it's gonna max out some of our CPUs here. It doesn't spread them out as evenly. There's some issues with that, but Aside from that, because it's so low and the computer's handling this pretty easily, uh, even with a bigger project, I could add another track to record and it's going to stay pretty low latency. Now let's check and see what our buffer size is right this minute because that does play a part into this. So it's at 128. Not bad. We could actually probably go down. Let's apply some changes and see just what we're dealing with here. And again, this is not a specific audio device. This is just the headphone jack right this moment. Hold me close, but don't touch me. Hold my hand, I'll turn away. You can see with the smaller buffer, we've increased the workload here because it has to do a little bit more in the process. So what we have, and this is customizable in your bar here. So if it's not there already, you can add it in. Um, but what we have is the ability to go into low latency mode. That's right here. So on or off. And this just activates. Let's go back in here for a moment. This little checkbox right here. It's the same thing. And we can set this to whatever we want. So for instance, it's going to limit it to 30 milliseconds, but the default is closer down here to five. That just means that the sound that you're recording and all the rest of the mix is going to have that limit. And so it's going to start deactivating things. You can see these buses right here are deactivated. I don't know if anything else is going to really be turned off in this project. Hold me close, but don't touch me. Hold my hand, I'll turn away. So there is a little difference in the mix. If you are listening close, I can't tell it because it's just these two buses. But if you're doing a lot of different things with some of these, for instance, you might lose autocorrect or for pitch correct. You might lose some reverbs or some delays. Uh, you're going to lose a few things potentially to get it below that threshold. But what it does mean is that you can record without having to do any bounces or freezing. And you can then add that part in uh, without having any major latency or delay. And then you just turn it off and you continue mixing. So it's a way to get things in there uh, without necessarily break, breaking the bank with your CPU or anything else. Okay, just wanted to look at that. Uh, pretty awesome way to maintain your timing of your session, 
very easy to do, but you have to be aware that it's there and, uh, and just start using it. Okay, see you tomorrow.